see people uh, chiming in. Whoa, from Cleveland and LA and Baltimore. There's people from all over the country tonight chiming in on this. So we're really stoked that we have so such a diversity of people and cities joining us tonight. Little old Sacramento, we feel proud about this. Yes. Um, and Canada, oh my gosh. So thank you everyone for uh, coming in tonight. We're going to give a couple minutes, let everybody join the room. And as I said, if you have anything uh, you want to say, feel free to say it in the chat room. And in just a couple minutes, we'll get started. Alex, can I mention that if you um, do not have a wet paper towel, a toothpick, or a pencil, and we're waiting for people to come in, if you can go grab those materials right now, um, you'll need them for your sugar skull. Yeah, something that's damp, just, just so that it's eager to clean. Um, if you have like a toothpick, or if you have like a meat thermometer, um, or a scribe, if you do any baking, all these things, and then a pencil. You don't need an okay. eraser. No eraser. No eraser. I'll probably mess up this call a little bit, I imagine. <laughs> First, before we get into the class, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the significance of Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Uh, what does this mean in uh, Mexican culture? I, you know, a lot of folks, I won't name any names, uh, probably no one on this call, but would uh, might assume that it's just sort of like a Mexican Halloween. Uh, is that the case or what's the deeper significance behind it? Well, thank you for that question, Alex. Um, it's not like Halloween. It's it's actually very, um, it's different in the sense it's very spiritual. And so it dates back before the, the Spanish arrived to Mexico um, and to the Americas. Um, it was something that was pre-Hispanic within the, the cultures that already existed, the indigenous cultures. And specifically in Mexico, we had the Mexica, the Purepecha, we had the Mayas and various other cultures. Today, there are still 60 languages spoken in Mexico that are indigenous languages. So you can imagine the variety of the wonderful indigenous cultures that already existed here before the Spanish came. And around this time, they had a wonderful celebration um, that was in honor of the goddess de la muerte, la diosa de la muerte, and um, which is the, the goddess of death. And so they would celebrate um, for a whole month the idea of children and also um, adults who had passed before them. And so this is where this, um, this wonderful tradition stems from uh, that we see today. And so when the, the Spanish arrived here to the Americas, um, the Catholicism came with them and they adapted um, what was the, the indigenous culture. They adapted this idea, this tradition to what was already existed within the Catholic church, which was Dia de Todos Santos. Uh, the day of all of the saints or All Saints Day. And this is something that they did very close to Halloween as well. That was a, a, um, a tradition that was before Catholicism in the British islands. And so they um, adapted um, their, that idea of Halloween into All Hallows Eve. Uh, so we really see this mixture of cultures and that's one of my favorite parts of it um, is that you see the beauty of the Mexican culture with both traditions coming together in this lively and amazing way. Um, and today it's celebrated on November 1st and 2nd in Mexico. Um, it's something that we do um, as a festivity. It's not something that is sad, which is something different than um, the way maybe they celebrate in, in España, the traditional way of Todos Santos, where it's kind of a sad, somber um, remembrance of, of family members in Mexico. Uh, we have our wonderful altar set up. We join family members, we go out to the cemeteries. We often have processions where the whole family joins and ends up at the cemetery. We have music, we have um, song, we have uh, just a wonderful celebration. And there's very certain very key elements that we always have as well. Well, that's fantastic. So um, you, you mentioned November 1st and 2nd, so it's actually more than one day. Yes. Um, and it's more like a fiesta, like you said. It's it's a it's a celebration. It's it's not a time for people to be really somber. They're really celebrating that that sort of um, connection with past loved ones. So sugar skulls specifically, how did uh, how did sugar skulls come about? And uh, 
you know, kind of tell us a little bit about that. So there are uh, quite a few key elements on the altar. Um, a few of them are um, mainly because of a few things. So um, we have the indigenous um, connection, right? And so you have the four key elements. Um, um, it would be fire, water, um, earth, and also wind. So you really have to have those elements on your, your altar. So we have, for example, el papel picado, which um, shows us wind when it moves, right? We have las velas. Las velas are the candles or some other um, incense that shows us fire. Then on our, um, um, on our altar, we also have water. Um, and also you can have the favorite drink. We have some favorite drinks of Rufina, who is my husband's grandmother. Um, and it can be cafe, te, et cetera, some different kinds of drinks. Um, and then we also have earth, right? And we have earth here with different kinds of food. And also we have the Sempasuchi, which is very, very important. It's a strong connection with the dead. Sempasuchi is an American um, flower. It's what we know as the marigold. And it, supposedly it has a very strong odor and this odor attracts the, um, the, the, our loved ones, um, los difuntos, um, those who have died before us, they, it attracts them. So the idea with the altar, because our goal is to have our loved ones back with us on these days, is um, to make a beautiful altar with all of their favorite things, including sugar skulls. Sugar, it attracts and it makes them want to come and join our festivities. Um, all of their favorite things, these four um, um, elements that must be on your altar, as well as the name. Um, usually on the calaveras, we have the name of the person who we want to honor as well. And then you'll also see a few other things, um, maybe calacas, which became very um, prominent in the last century. Um, these are um, like skeletons and kind of making fun of death. Um, and then um, also calavera. So there's the calavera de azúcar, which are the sugar skulls, and then calaveras, which are little notes that have kind of rhymes or jokes or poems about our loved, our, our, um, loved ones, our deceased loved ones. So the idea is to have fun, to remember, to really enjoy being with family. That's the key thing here is la familia. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. What's, it's a lovely tradition, a lovely way to uh, celebrate the dead and, and family just in in general, um, I see a, a number of children on the call and they're getting antsy. I know they want to get to the, the meat of this, which is just the decoration and the fun stuff. So Maria, thank you again. Thank you for everything you've done to make this happen. Uh, one more quick, quick mention. We have Emma, who is the East Bay Community Manager for Yelp. She's awesome, she rocks. She's going to be helping me as far as fielding any questions that come up in the chat room, feel free to ask questions uh, as they come about. Um, and uh, without uh, any other delays, we'll pass on to Andrea, who is uh, the Andrea Rodriguez. She works with Casa de Espanol sometimes, but she is an art instructor and she is going to be, let me make sure I have my screen here. She is going to be uh, doing the instruction tonight. So I will pass it over to you and uh, you can take it away from here. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Sure. And thank you, Maria, for having me in Casa de Español. They offer a lot of great artistic um, opportunities with their classes. Um, you not only are learning language, you understand a lot of elements about culture, as you can see with Maria, who's very well versed in traditions and all her vast knowledge. Um, of what we celebrate with the de los Muertos. So everyone cross your fingers. We're gonna, we're gonna try a screen share um, really quick and see if this works. Fingers crossed, it did work that before. It did work, okay. So yeah. um, a little bit before we get started, if you have not grabbed certain materials, what you're going to need is a, just like a paper towel or a napkin that's damp. Um, it's not a lot of water, but it's wet. Um, you'll also need a pencil. Uh, don't worry about it if it doesn't have an eraser and then a toothpick or um, I use a scribe. It's going to help out with your icing. Um, but if you don't have this, if you have a meat thermometer, 
that'll also work. You're just looking for a pointy end and the metal is um, a little easier for the icing than the um, toothpick because it's not as coarse, but this will get the job done. So if you have one over the other. Uh, for those of you who are grabbing materials, I'll go over a quick introduction of myself so you have time to go grab what you need and you're not missing any instruction by the time you get back. Uh, so I have been an art educator. I've been a middle school and high school art teacher for the last 10 years. And that's what I do during the day. I'm, I'm an art educator and I am very much in love, of, as you can see with my family altar, I'm in my home. Um, so this is my family altar with the tradition of Dia de los Muertos. And I bring that into my classroom. Um, and so I really love to expose multiple traditions and cultures like Casa de Español does for their students to, um, to the students that I have in my class and just help them have an understanding of the different way we celebrate life because this is a celebration of life. Um, so one of the elements we do is we talk about the sugar skulls. Um, so that's what I do during the day. And my night job is besides being a mommy, um, I also have a baking business, Nothing Fancy Bakery. So that gives me some exposure and some understanding with the icing that you're gonna be working with today. So the, the toothpick and the scribe comes from that experience. Um, so first things first, what you'll need to do if you did get the package of supplies from Casa de Español is you'll wanna open it up and you wanna save everything. So I'm gonna switch our camera views. There it is, yay. So you guys received a bag, yours is full. If you can open that up and dump out the contents and you should see some feathers and you should also see some of these rhinestones. And then what you're going to do is just take everything out and we're gonna start with this bag. Um, so you're gonna push these things aside. Uh, you're also gonna want to take out your icing. So your icing you want to, before you take the top off, you wanna go ahead and massage it a bit. Each of the colors, I believe everyone's came with blue, red, yellow, and green. So I just give it a nice massage. Sometimes these, um, the liquid uh, moves a little bit. So we just- and Andrea, we, we did instruct people to, uh, or at least the people who got the kits to mm -hmm. put the icing in the refrigerator. But Perfect. it's not a deal breaker if it's, if it's a little wet, right? Oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. But we just wanna massage a little bit just to get it moving. Um, sometimes when it's in the tube and it hasn't been open, open yet because it's fresh from the box, um, sometimes it's hard to get out. So I've noticed that it's just easier to just massage them a bit. And then once you've done that massage, if you just want to open all of them up, so I just like taking the cap off, putting the cap aside, um, just so that you don't have to do back and forth. And since we're going to move pretty quick, it won't dry it out. So that's something you won't have to worry about. So with the artistic process, the, what I like to do first is kind of understand our materials. So with icing, um, a lot of times people like to draw like you would with a pen or a pencil, but when we're going to work, so the plastic bag is going to help you with understanding before you go on to your sugar skull base. Um, you're going to want to practice maybe some lines or some swirls. So I'm going to show you some designs and you're going to let it catch on your surface and then kind of lift and drag. And that'll help you draw your straight lines without pushing in and dragging, which will hurt the surface of your um, sugar skull. And I'm gonna do this on a white piece of paper so that you guys can see this a little better. Well, that's tough. Yes. So if again, you're gonna pour it out a little bit, let it catch onto your surface, and then you're sort of lifting and then just going along. If you wanna try some swirls, so again, you'll let it catch and really slow, you're just gonna move around. You're not dragging it on the surface. And when you're done, you can either press or you can get your toothpick. So I'll get my toothpick and I can wipe off that end. Another thing I like to use when we do sugar skulls, there are a lot of floral arrangements. Um, so uh, Alex, you have some great examples behind you. If everyone see Emma, she also has some beautiful examples behind her and her screen. Um, so for those flowers, and if you also, if you wanna do hearts or those that teardrop design, I like to make a puddle, like a circle, and then I drag it and that'll get me that floral petal shape. And if you keep doing that, you can give yourself a couple of petals. 
And what that'll do is it'll give you your flower. So you you'll puddle at the top and then you'll just drag it to the bottom. Ooh. And that'll help. And then in between, and we'll practice all of this before you go. I suggest practicing here before you put it on your sugar skull. If you, the icing layers take about 10 to 15 minutes to dry in between. But what you can do, um, like you can see in Alex's screen and I'll also show you um, an example here. Let me see if I have one. Um, but here, like in the nose, you can pile on the different colors, but you need to wait till the other one um, completely dries. And that takes about 10 to 15 minutes before you add the next layer, but I'll show you some different elements that you can do. Okay, so let's talk about design. So I always suggest working in pencil first. And when we work in pencil, you want to work very lightly. If you press too hard on our sugar skull, um, what happens is uh, it'll be so dark, it, it'll start to take away that sugar surface. Um, and secondarily, you can't really erase on this. So if you draw pretty lightly, um, it, it'll be very friendly to you. Right here, I also have a traditional sugar skull. This is from the EFIF from Mexico City. And the elements that Maria had talked about, um, this is traditionally where they would put someone's name, where they are dedicating the skull to. Um, so if that's something you wanna add, I suggest maybe doing a layer, like a rectangle square that you fill in with your icing. And you can use like a label maker. You could also use a piece of paper. Icing is a lot like um, glue. And so that, that's an element that you can add on later because it'll be a little difficult to write on it. Or you can do it once this layer dries, you can write on it later. But when we Thank work you. on our skull. Andrea, I should mention really quick that uh, Maria told me, I, I should have said this before, but she told me that, you know, they made a hundred of these skulls. She said it takes about 12 hours to make each skull. Yeah. So that's it, pretty incredible. They, you're it's pretty intense. Out. Yeah. And they came out very, very, this is a nice quality skull. Um, these yeah, these are traditionally made more hollow. And what I really like about the Casa de Espanol skulls, these are nice and solid. And the quality that they did, you could also stand them up on your altar. There's different ways to prop them up. So they gave you a lot of great dimension to work with. So shout out to them for getting that for you guys. Um, there are certain- um, oh, Hey Andrea, it's Emma here. Um, I just don't wanna miss these couple of questions that have come in. Um, this is really cool, by the way. I've never seen anything like this. Um, Evelyn is wondering how can you buy the sugar skull kit? So I know these ones sold out really quick and you know, we're here at the event now, but is there another avenue in which we can buy kits like this in the future? That is an excellent question. And as a small business, we are here to serve. So <laughs> I'm sure that we can find other ways to be able to provide this. Um, I, someone asked also about the recipe, the um, actual schools, it's, it's six cups of sugar to two tablespoons of egg whites. Um, and then we have the mold, um, and, and the mold we, uh, we found um, on Amazon. Uh, so it wasn't a super tricky, but, um, but yeah, it, 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 there were three different, there were three of us who were doing it and it ended up being my husband who made all these beautiful, the, the best ones. But I do say that there is a certain technique to it um, and it's um, 12 hours for them to dry. Um, and it takes, I don't know, um, it, maybe 15 minutes for each one to really pack it in there and, and get a good solid um, calavera. <laughs> yeah, so of course, if, if folks are here or near Sacramento, uh, it, there's a possibility that you could make these again in the future for them? Yes. Okay, perfect. And of course, the sugar skull recipes, as Andrea is saying, there's a lot of, a lot of ways to make them so people can make them at home. Uh, another time if they if they chose to do so but Andrea uh, go ahead yeah of course I will suggest though if you can buy from Casa Espanol um, they made it look a lot easier than it is I have attempted to do this at home and I would buy it from them any day <laughs> I can decorate but I can't make them so uh, it, they came out beautifully um, so a couple elements that you'll see traditionally on most sugar skulls we like to emphasize this is a celebration of life so a nice big grin so what's traditionally done is um, you'll see some beautiful teeth. So you can play either with your gems. This is why I like to dump out my materials first and see, you know, what am I looking at? What, what do I want to incorporate? Um, so what I typically do is I'll draw a straight line that'll, and they have sort of an outline, a straight line that goes across 
to really emphasize that smile. And then I'll split that in half. And that's going to be the length of my teeth. And then you can do, I, you can either do different sizes of your teeth, but I tend to do these oval shapes and I, I like keeping things symmetrical. So I do about three on each side of that center line. And so I'll go to the other side and do about three this way. And again, if they're a little uneven or you can see this line got a little crooked, guess what? Icing's gonna cover that right up. So you don't have to worry about that later. So that's one of the first elements I always like to add. Again, you can do your teeth any way you'd like. Um, you can also bejewel them with the different options that you have. Um, I also like to draw where my skull, um, the, where I might wanna add icing. So you can add um, that teardrop technique that we use here to make this flower. Um, if you wanna do that inside your eye, you can outline that or you can outline, I like to outline these circles. You can fill it in with different colors and maybe traditionally you can do some, for instead of eyelashes, you can do some petals on the outside to give her some eyelashes. And then if you wanna fill things in, you'll, you can pull it with a bunch of icing and you can dip those um, jewels right in the center. And then maybe I'll fill in my nose. And then I like to keep things pretty ornate on the side. So I'll turn it, maybe do a nice, there's a lot of um, curve designs that typically happen. But again, this is for you and whoever you'd like to dedicate it to. There's no wrong or right way to do this. But these are some techniques that'll help you um, with maybe some issues that might arise. And then I'll show you some techniques with um, layering colors. So I'm gonna add some of that same shape up here. And then maybe I'll add a couple swirls here. And this is just outlining where I'm gonna be doing my different icing. So once you get all your design laid out and you have everything where you want it, and I have one that's already complete, so I'm going to switch that out. So now we're going to start with our icing. Let's see if everybody can see that. Okay, there we go. So you just decide, you know, what color you want to work with. There's a lot about balancing, but again, there's no right or wrong way to go about this. Um, so I think I'm going to start with blue. When you get your icing, you want to work from the top, kind of like toothpaste. Well, I don't know if people use their toothpaste, but I use my toothpaste by pushing from the top and bringing it down. So you're going to add all your pressure up here and you'll see that the icing is already coming out. And so again, you're going to lay it down and you're going to just let it fall onto your surface. Kaylin T has a really, um, <clears throat> excuse me, great question. I think everyone would love to hear. Would you make one sugar skull for each spirit family member you are connecting with? Maria, do you want to answer that question? Sure. And that's a great question, Kaylin. I was just reading it as well. Um, you're more than welcome to do it. The idea is to have something that represents each person that you want to call to your altar. So definitely the idea of putting a name or if you don't have a sugar school, putting a photo, anything that represents even the, their favorite food or anything like that. If you have the opportunity to do a sugar school per person, that's amazing. Um, if not, you could also put your last name or a family name on one sugar school, and that could be in representation of any family member um, or some some word like on, um, on the sugar school that we had here on the box. We put amor, which means love in Spanish, and we put um, my husband's both of his um, his grandparents. And so it's definitely um, it's very symbolic. So you can pick um, different things. Uh, it doesn't have to be one per person if you can't make it that way. So we're just working through the different icing sections. Um, I do suggest starting it with it flat and then letting it spend some time with um, drying before moving on. So I'm just, again, using that technique where I'm letting the icing fall. If you know you're gonna be putting some rhinestones down. So in my pack, I got these awesome little 
shapes. They're not exactly rectangles, but they're not exactly ovals. And I thought those would go amazing in here. And you're gonna use your icing like glue. So wherever icing's down, you can go ahead and just pop oopsie, that in. And this is where your toothpick comes in handy. And you just press it down to make sure it stays nice and solid. You can create different patterns. Um, I know some of these jewels come with um, stickers on the back to take it off and make it stick. That's not going to stick to your ice to your sugar surface. So then you can just leave them on and you can just pop them right on. And then that toothpick will help you if you make any mistakes. So let's say this was moving at all. I could just push it with the toothpick or if it gets kind of lumpy, what you can also do is get your toothpick in there and sh shake it a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll smooth it out and make it so that it's no longer as lumpy. Just to answer a question, um, they, I believe they said they do not ship because the skulls are fragile, but there are kits, there are various ways to make the sugar skulls. Mm -hmm. And the ones they made locally are pretty fragile, but uh, they will make them again, of course, uh, next year. So they do this as a yearly tradition. So we can always get some more then. Um, come to Sacramento, please. But there's plenty of ways to order them online and plenty of recipes for making your own skulls as well. Yes. And I think we missed a question from David C. in Buffalo. Um, does the altar stay up all year or is it only laid out for Dia de los Muertos? That's another great question. Yes, it's, it's generally only laid out for Dia de los Muertos, but it's not uncommon to see some kind of a, a, a small ofrenda in our houses where we do keep um, the uh, a picture. Maybe we have a candle that we light often. Um, we might have a little prayer next to it. That's very common in, um, in Mexican houses, you see. This is beautiful, Andrea. Me encanta. Well, this is just, you can get as creative as you want with this. this is fun. Oh, yes. And so typically, like Maria had mentioned, if you wanted to do a shape here to overlay the name, that's typically where it goes. I've also seen them done on top. Um, I've also seen people decorated with elements. So um, I had an uncle who had recently passed and he loved fishing. And so if I, I've done um, a sugar skull where I do fishing poles or decorate with fish or I decorate it with his favorite, um, maybe his favorite food or favorite drinks. If they always wore, there's um, the project I do with my students in my class, we bring it so kids for their grandparents or loved ones who had passed, um, often they'll bring it if their grandpa always wore a certain hat or their grandma always wore a pair of earrings, then that's how you would decorate it for that person. And so it's in remembrance of them. Um, you could also write different messages. Uh, I've also seen different ofrendas, also, like on ours, we, um, you can add your pets uh, and to remember them, they're also part of your family. So if that's something you'd enjoy doing, anyone that you love, it's something that you can decorate it with. Their favorite colors. Um, my mother made one for her mom and she, my my Nana always wore a lot of jewelry and always she never left the house without her lipstick on. So my mom made sure that her skull had some bright red lipstick and had some mascara in her eyelashes emphasized um, in remembrance of her. And they stay, if you, if you wrap them, um, they might turn yellow as the years go on, but if you take good care of them and wrap them up, they'll, they'll last for years. And it's something when you build your altar every year, I bring my same sugar skulls out that I make for my family. Some stay up all year. Um, but there's some that I keep year round out and there's some that I bring out on for the special occasion. And what do you wrap the sugar skull in? So I, I wrap mine in a saran wrap and then in a bubble wrap. And then I keep it in just an air to, so like where all my um, Dia de los Muertos uh, decorations are, I typically keep them in one bin that's airtight in the garage um, where it's not too hot and it will, won't alter its consistency. And so if you have any lumps, that's where your toothpick can go in and it'll give you a nice smooth surface. You kind of just jiggle it over a little bit and it'll get rid of those loose ends. You could also add in, uh, where's my yellow? So you could also add in different elements if you want to give them. 
Yours was looking wonderful. I know. I'm excited to see how everybody else has turned out. I'm, I want to see how people are. Yeah, we have. We can see most of your cameras if anybody's brave enough to show what they've got so far. Uh, feel to free to hold it up. Let's take a look. It can be a little hard with Zoom backgrounds, so just be mindful if you have a Zoom background. Oh, yeah. I see uh, a little guy there with an uh, awesome skull. Oh, that's wonderful. A um, couple other people. Everybody just looks really intently hard at work here, which is Everyone's working. what we like to see. Put them to work. Yes. Yes, that is a misconception. I think uh, Laura asked, I thought you were supposed to eat them. And I think a lot of people think that they're ed they're, there are edible sugar skulls, right? But I don't think necessarily you're supposed to consume them. Yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to eat them if you put them on your altar or la ofrenda. And so the idea with the all the food and everything that you put on the altar, um, the idea is that the spirits come and they actually partake and they actually eat it. So if we were to eat it, then we wouldn't get any nutrients from it. That's a really great question. Um, and so that's the traditional idea of, of anything that goes on the altar. It no longer has any nutrients because they've already enjoyed um, it. And, and something else I was thinking, Alex, um, if people who are looking for festivities, there are two really great events happening here in Sacramento this weekend. Um, there's one at the Latino Center um, over in Miller Park off of Broadway and Fr Front Street. They're having a drive through Panteón. They do it every year. It's a beautiful demonstration of community coming together where um, people from um, families, they get together and they put their own ofrenda um, and they usually have music and and I know it's not going to be exactly the same as it usually is this year, but I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. So that's going to be over in Miller Park this weekend. And then also it's already happening in Old Sacramento, um, in Soul Collective, sorry, Soul Collective, they're having a wonderful walkthrough in Old Sacramento. Um, and I believe it goes until November 2nd. So two wonderful events for people to join in on if they are in the area. Okay, just to, just to be the final word on the issue of the uh, the sugar skulls, because I saw a couple more questions on that. So it's November 1st and 2nd, but you are not creating any more before then, correct? Um, I don't think so, <laughs> but we're always here on demand. So it, it, I'll put my um, um, Casa de Español, if it's okay for uh, me to put our email address. And if people are wanting to order, we can definitely figure out a way to make it happen. Absolutely. And we're also sharing uh, your Instagram handle and uh, the review link for the event a couple of times. Right. We hope you all give some feedback there. Let me see. And, and Andrea is an amazing example of the type of instructor we do have um, generally when we have different events here at CASA, as well as our summer camps for kids in the summer. Um, we're looking forward to them next year. Um, and we do uh, Dia de los Muertos. We do. We also um, teach the kids about the Amazon. We teach the kids um, about Spain and um, all of um, like the el, el Festival Tomatina, where um, they get to play with tomatoes <laughs> and have um, a big blast up for, with that. So a lot of different options, and and I'm just so grateful for Andrea, and she's doing such a wonderful job. Um, initially, my husband and I, when uh, um, Alex said, um, oh, would you be willing to do it? I thought, well, maybe I could put it together. And there is no way I could have done it in this way. So I'm so happy and so um, thankful for you, Andrea. Muchas gracias. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Muchas gracias. Kaylin T is wondering, are you still doing the book club? And what is the current book, if you are? So at the moment, we're doing an intermediate book club, um, and we've decided to kind of change um, doing different things because originally we were doing one that was more superior advanced level, and so um, we wanted to give others a chance. So right now we're doing an intermediate five-week book club um, where students are reading, um, one second, Lola Lago um, y el Sol de las Vacaciones, or Las Vacaciones del Sol, something 
something like that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not the one leading that book club. Um, but it's a fun intermediate um, book that students are reading and then they're practicing conversation. And we're planning on doing other ones um, like um, that. There's also a really cool bilingual Toastmasters that we collaborate with. And that's a, a way for you to practice both English and Spanish public speaking. It's a more formal club um, and they meet on Thursdays. Um, the, the intermediate book club meets on uh, Wednesdays. So a lot of fun things happening. That is really cool. Yeah, and shout out to Kaylin T. She's, she used to work with me here in Sacramento. She's a longtime Sacramento Yelper. So hope you're doing well, Kaylin. Okay, anyone running into any issues or is it looks like everyone's hard at work. I love when it's yeah. crazy time. I think the silence is a good thing. Everybody's- Silence is a great thing. working away here. In typical um, culture, would like the whole family do this together or is there typically a one, like a person in the family unit that does it? I think it depends the family um, and it depends the family's traditions. I mean, some families, they go to El Mercado and they buy everything. <laughs> And other families are very artistic and they do it themselves. Um, so it, it kind of depends family to family. Um, and it also depends on family to family how big the celebration is. Some families, they don't, they do um, the ofrenda at the house, but they might not go to the cemetery. Other families, they do huge celebrations where they decorate, they go early in the morning, they clean all of um, the tumbas, the tombstones of their family members. Um, they bring a, tons of flowers, they hire a mariachi, they do a procession from their house all the way to the cemetery, um, and it's just like a huge elaborate uh, festival or fiesta, I should say, uh, for the family. So it really depends family to family. And that's what's so cool about it is being able to see other people's traditions too. Um, and I've seen some really cool things where you see the mixture of people who aren't necessarily, haven't been, been or lived in Mexico for very long, but they bring in their traditions from wherever they've um, come from other places to Mexico. And I'm, I think a lot of us are also wondering what, if Tiffany is wondering, what do they do with the feathers for those who are also following along? Yeah, I was wondering that myself. See, well, the feathers are an extra element. So a traditional sugar school doesn't necessarily have feathers. Um, I've seen them where they put it right in the center and they kind of put it out. Um, the Katrinas, the one, uh, it's the skeleton that um, has all the beautiful feathers. Uh, she's usually the one with all of um, the feathers, but I know kids really like feathers and they've been a big hit in my classes when I've taught making sugar skulls and so that's why we added in the feathers. So it's not necessarily something you see every day to put a feather on a sugar skull, uh, but um, the, it, we, we believe in creativity. So if you find a cool way to put the feather, excellent. Yeah, there's no right or wrong way. Okay. And then um, we have, I've also seen and we've taught in the past as well, um, pipe cleaners are also really um, a fun element to add. Uh, to the top if you want to make sort of like a headdress or things like that um, or something like Maria's wearing if you can add a, a pipe cleaner from one side to the to the other you can either use hot glue gun some of them you can pierce these are pretty have to like these are good solid ones so you would um, either use icing and let it sit for a day and then you can either use tissue paper uh, flowers you can use flake flowers and you can add those as well so you can add as many supplies as you want or as little supplies. Well, Andrea, what you've created, the first one at least, looks uh, absolutely fantastic. It looks oh, like thank you. it's still, still kind of a work in progress on the second one there. Yeah, um, and I'll show you what I did earlier. So here's some different, for those of you who are just looking for different element designs, here's okay. another one I had. Casa Espanol is kind enough to... Let me take these back from their altar. But these are some that we made earlier. Those were so cool. Um, Andrea and Maria, 
Lisa P is wondering about the size of the kit. So, so she doesn't actually have it on her. Um, she's wondering about the size. And as far as tradition, is there a standard size in terms of a, for a sugar skull? Oh, no, there are all different kind of um, sizes. I've seen the little teeny ones. Um, and also, um, there's some really wonderful um, artists here in Sacramento who do really large ones. And they, um, there have been a few that have been here at the California Museum on display in, the, in past years. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's you. It's your, your connection with the person, your connection with the altar. Anything really goes on it. Um, the the one thing that I've read off, um, over and over is to keep make sure you have the four elements, the the, the marigolds to be able to attract um, the people to your or the the spirits to your altar. But other than that, uh, creativity there's the sky's the limit. So, and I know you were talking about using your herb does attract is the, for the large ones it's, it's like interesting imagining awesome. using all that sugar for the large ones is it always sugar or is it other materials as well um, traditionally it's sugar i can't think i mean i've seen some that are made of like styrofoam and they um they uh, mainly they do it for the duration so it lasts longer um but the the traditional ones are sugar Awesome, thank you. Uh, fantastic. Um, so just in the spirit of uh, inclusivity here, if uh, anybody else, do you want to show the progress that you've made on your skulls at this point? We wanna take off sh um, the share screen and do a gallery and everyone can hold theirs up. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, see. Uh, Alex, how does yours look? Oh, uh, pretty good, I just held it up here. I'll, I'll do it again. If everyone wants to showcase. Oh, wow. Michelangelo. Hello, everybody. Oh, Bria and Nora, that's so nice. Wow, Evangelina, Tiffany, Elliot. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Elliot, Michelangelo. 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 Wow, you're advanced. That's great. Yeah. Amazing. Gorgeous. Maggie, oh, oh so real. nice. Kaylin, Lisa. Those look great, guys. Everybody's oh, so oh, a Nicolette. That's great. Beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. So we're about to, we're going to wrap up the call here pretty soon, just because we don't really want to go over an hour. Um, I know people have some other things to do, but they're welcome to decorate all night long if they want to. And of course, if they're in Sacramento or not even close to here, visit Casa de Espanol and check out all the wonderful programs that they have going on year round. It's a great, great local business. It's a great part of the fabric of Sacramento. So we're really glad to have them. And um, Maria, are you offering any classes or doing anything virtually during COVID-19? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, we have changed all of our classes to online classes. So now we do our kids, teens, and adult classes all online. Uh, right now we're in our fall session. Uh, we just started, so there's still time to sign up. And then we also have our winter session that will be coming up in January. And hopefully um, by our spring session, we'll be back in the classroom. So we're really excited for that. And thank you guys so much, Alex, Emma, Stephanie, Andrea, muchísimas gracias. It's so wonderful, right? Um, times are tough with being a small business and it's so wonderful to have you guys helping us with Yelp and all of the support here of the, um, enjoying Dia de los Muertos and the beautiful tradition. It's just amazing to have so much community support from all over the, the country and Canada, all over North America, I should say. So muchísimas gracias. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so the work is so beautiful. Thank, thank you for being us part of your tradition. Yes, yeah, so we share the review link. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Andrea, Maria, thank you again. Stephanie and Emma in the Bay, thank you for your help. Everybody else around the country, thank you so much. Keep decorating your skulls and celebrate Day of the Dead next week. We'll see you soon. Feliz Dia de los Muertos! <laughs>